In this video, we're going to look at the relationship between linear velocity and angular velocity. Linear velocity does not necessarily mean you're traveling in a straight line, but it is change in distance over time, whereas angular velocity refers to change in rotation over time. So we're going to look at this in a simple example. We have a line uh, that's currently going through point A and B. We can think of that as the position at zero degrees if we want to, or zero radians. Uh, we have two circles with the same center, uh, zero. And we are going to move this line, rotate this line, to point CD. Now I want you to notice what happened here. Be different. Oh, that's not the pen I want, sorry. I want to get a red pen. Notice that as we traveled, A rotated to C and B rotated to D. Now, if I go back and do this again, I want you to notice how fast the rotation is occurring and how fast the linear velocity is. Now, in order to move from point A to point C and point B to point D, notice that they traveled a different distance along the outside of their respective circles. So, if, they, if that occurred at the same time, we know that the linear velocities cannot be equal. But their angular velocity are the same. They traveled the same angle in the same amount of time, so those are equal. Now what was happening right at point zero? At point zero, the linear velocity is zero because it traveled zero distance over time. But did it travel zero angle? So what I want you to imagine is that you're standing at point Z, at point uh, zero, sorry, point O, and you're facing along the ray from A to B. Then you're standing at point zero, or point O, I'm sorry, and you're facing along the ray from C to D. If you are facing straight ahead, did you have to rotate to get to look along AB and then to look along CD? Yes, you did. You didn't move any distance, but you did have to rotate. So the angular velocity at the center is not zero. It actually does have angular velocity. Now let's look over at the formulas on the left-hand side of the page. You see a familiar formula, circumference is equal to 2 pi r, or circumference is equal to 2 pi times the radius. In what we studied about radians, this makes sense because there are 2 pi radians around the circle. And so um, if we travel a distance of 2 pi radians, then all we need to know is the radius of the circle to know how far along the outside edge of the circle we have traveled. Now similarly, we can look at, rather the entire circumference, we can look at an arc. So S represents an arc. Let me do that a little better. That's very messy. So for example, the distance from B to D is an arc, so we can call that S. Now how would we calculate what that length is? Well, we would need to know the angle that which which was traveled theta and we would need to know the radius and theta must be in radians in order for this formula to apply now to calculate linear velocity and this we're going to come back and use this in just a minute to calculate linear velocity linear velocity is calculated as change in distance over change in time. Well, the distance in this case would be s over time t. The angular velocity, which is labeled omega, this is a Greek letter, not a w with a little curve in it, omega is the change in angle over the change in time, or, or theta over t. Now, if I start with linear velocity and write this as s over t, and I go back and look at my formula, s equals theta times r, I can rewrite s as theta times r. And notice then, I have theta over t times r, or omega times r, which is usually written r omega. So I have 
linear velocity is equal to the radius times the angular velocity. So linear velocity equals the radius and times the angular velocity. Now this does have to be done in radians. Now let's look at our back at our example and see if this formula, this important formula, makes sense. Well, if we're at point zero, the radius would be zero. So no matter what angular velocity I have, the linear velocity is going to be zero. That makes sense. Um, we also see that AC is a smaller distance than BD. So if we have a smaller radius from zero to A, we're going to have a smaller linear velocity, even though the angular velocity is the same. So you're going to be using these formulas and these relationships and these concepts to do some application problems. Um, so this is a very important set of notes and information for you to know.